Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, students. Is anyone there online? Yeah. So let's uh, start with uh, today's class. Um, we, we had uh, uh, spoken about uh, how uh, mulberry can be propagated in the last class. And uh, today we will be talking about some of the disease uh, uh, that are affected by the, uh, it, 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 it can be a virus, it can be a fungal disease. Uh, there are various one, uh, parasites that uh, affect the plant uh, in some way or the other. And uh, we have to know how uh, you can control them and what are the disease type that affects and then how you can control them. Um, because um, when you're talking about propagation, we definitely uh, know that there are some uh, parasites which can affect them. So today's class, we will be talking about uh, mulberry disease and uh, pests, uh, what are the uh, diseases and the pests that are going to affect that particular mulberry plants. Okay, so coming to the first uh, point, that is uh, whenever uh, there is a mulberry cultivation, that is you can take up any plants, they have their own type of uh, um, uh, parasites infecting them, the different types of uh, uh, diseases that are, uh, they are affecting. So here, particularly, we are going to talk only about mulberry plants because these are the ones that we are going to cultivate for the nutrition of the larval forms because you are giving the food for the larval forms which food that is the mulberry uh, leaves because uh, the larval forms are the one that is going to voraciously feed on uh, the protein part of the leaves and then they are going to give what we need is that is a silk a thread okay so when you are cultivating them or uh, um, and we have to take care of them you have to see that the mulberry plants do not have any diseases affecting them so that the larval forms are also safe and uh, uh, no disease are affecting the larval forms and then you get your silk because ultimately, uh, whatever you uh, sow in, you have to report double the amount because the whatever the input that you are giving, uh, it has to be equally uh, good enough when you get an output over there. So the first thing that is you have to understand what are the uh, different diseases um, and how you are going to control these diseases of the mulberry trees. Okay. Many diseases can be caused. It can be, as I said, fungi, it can be bacteria, it can be nematode, anything can be affected. Nematode are the ones that comes under uh, round worms. Okay, so these are the ones that we are talking about in this particular uh, class. These diseases are either airborne, that is, uh, uh, you, you have it in the air, uh, which is also called as a foliar uh, disease, or it can be soil borne roots are the one that is going to be affected. So it can be foliar, foliar can be the leaves, the branch, the uh, stem, anything can be affected by airborne and soil bone definitely because the roots are going to be in the soil. So soil bone uh, uh, diseases definitely affect the roots and they cause both reduction in the leaf yield and deterioration of the leaf quality. So if there is a reduction in the leaf uh, yield, then what is that you're going to feed the uh, larval forms? And then if the quality is also gone, then definitely you're not going to get a proper uh, silk uh, thread. Uh, and then uh, all your uh, hard work goes uh, waste. So you're going to check up all these uh, 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 problems that you're going to face and you try to decrease them. So definitely you're going to take care of the plants. Otherwise, what is happening is they will not have a proper leaf yield and definitely deterioration in the leaf quality. The, we were talking about uh, what is the leaf quality. Uh, for example, when you're talking about Morus alba, we were saying that it is going to give a superior quality silk worm because uh, uh, silk thread, because it is uh, having uh, a high uh, amount of proteins present in them, the high quality of protein, uh, fibroin and sericin is the one that we were talking about, fibroin and sericin. So these two are the main proteins that give us a uh, a superior type of uh, silk thread. So if the leaf quality is deteriorating, then what is that we are going to get uh, when we when we have given so much of hard work in rearing and taking care of the larval forms, then your uh, your manpower for uh, picking up the cocoon
spoons and trying to threading uh, remove the threads from them it, it all goes away so you are going to take care of your uh, mulberry cultivation thoroughly as for that again we should know what are the different diseases that are affecting them feeding of this disease leaf uh, definitely affects the growth of the development of silkworm cocoon and of course the silk quality okay so we are going to talk about the types of mulberry diseases what are the types of mulberry diseases it is based on the plant parts that are affected the mode of transmission first is plant parts which plant whether it is a leaf whether it is the stem whether it is a branch or whether it is the roots that is the parts of the plant mode of transmission how they are being transmitted is it airborne root or uh, it can be any any uh, type of transmission prevalence where all it is prevalent periodicity how often the plants can be affected and parasitic nature whether these are the uh, what type of uh, parasite they are whether they are bacteria fungal and uh, the nature in how they are going to affect that particular plant part based on the plant parts affected we are going to talk about foliar root vascular and systemic diseases though we may not be able to uh, complete everything we will try to uh, maximum uh, complete the uh, class so first uh, the diseases that are classified are foliar root vascular and systemic diseases is what you are going to talk about in this class and the diseases appearing on the leaf stem root is known as foliar diseases it can be either the leaf the stem and the fruit of that particular plant is known as foliar diseases so if you find any of this affecting then you are going to say that this is affected by a foliar diseases invariable of whether it's a bacteria or fungal or uh, any other form when the disease appears on the root system definitely it is termed as root diseases because only roots root disease and uh, the spreading uh, throughout the plant system is called as systemic if it is spreading throughout the plant the whole plant if the whole plant is affected then you are calling them as systemic diseases so here we are going to talk about three important ones then according to the mode of disease uh, transmission of the disease they are called as seed borne air borne soil borne so it can be affected by a seed because if a, if a seed is infested by any parasite then definitely when you sow that seed the plant is definitely going to be uh, affected that, uh, by that particular uh, diseases and uh, it can be airborne because uh, it, it can be uh, alive anywhere uh, in the air so it can be airborne and definitely soil borne soil borne definitely root diseases are going to be affected and on the basis of the parasitic nature the nature of that parasite the diseases are divided into two types so one can be non parasitic the other can be parasitic so that's the parasitic nature non parasitic is not going to affect much parasitics definitely going to affect the uh, either the foliar or the root now this is occurring due to the either deficiency of nutrients or injuries or without involvement of microbes that's called as non parasitic right if there is no involvement of the parasite then how you are going to call them as parasitic diseases that is why you are calling them as non parasitic diseases so when there is uh, no uh, um, parasitic involvement but if there is a deficiency in the nutrients or injuries to the plant nutrients in as such if the soil is deficient of nutrients the plant will definitely cannot go so if there is any deficiency of nutrients or injury uh, or without involvement of microbes is known as non parasitic diseases or non infectious diseases because if you are not going to provide proper food for the plant how do you expect them to grow such tall uh, plant and how you are going to expect the leaves to be um, of high quality so you are uh, you have to see to it that uh, you you manure the soil thoroughly uh, you apply fertilizers thoroughly so that the plants can grow into a healthy plant so that was non uh, parasitic or non infectious disease now when you are talking about parasitic uh, diseases the definitely there should be an involvement of uh, any type of a parasite which is going to affect that particular plants so it can be either fungi it can be bacteria or uh, it can be virus and definitely it can be nematode nematode are the round ones the, that survive on the uh, soil and these are known as parasitic diseases because parasites they are going to survive on the host and here the host is nothing but the 
plants which are going to be uh, degraded by this particular parasite. Now coming to the first one, we were talking about foliar diseases. So we'll be talking about foliar disease, uh, we'll be talking about root disease, and of course a little bit of systemic diseases are the ones that we are going to talk about. And um, when you're talking about the foliar diseases of mulberry and their management, uh, they are affected uh, as, uh, from the, as a leaf spot. You can also come across uh, powdery mildew. You will also be talking about leaf rust and also leaf blight. So these are the different types that you'll be talking about under major foliar diseases. What are the major foliar diseases? It can be either a leaf spot, it can be either a powdery mildew, or it can be either a leaf rust where uh, the leaves are going to get rusted. And it can be also a leaf blight. Leaf blight is one again that is uh, which are going to be affected. So leaf spot diseases, the first one we'll be talking about the leaf spot diseases, which is also caused by a fungal disease. The pathogen that is going to affect this particular uh, leaf is the Cercospora moricola is the one that is uh, the pathogen name, Cercospora spora, all those are, which are uh, spore swamps, they come under spora, Cercospora Muricola is the one that is going to be affecting this particular leaf spot. You can see the spots on the leaves, uh, how they look like, the spores uh, formation. Occurrence, of course, it is airborne because you are talking about the foliar disease. They are airborne disease occurring during rainy season followed by winter. Immediately you get winter. So uh, it starts during the rainy season followed by winter. Disease starts 35 to 40 days after pruning uh, or harvesting the leaves and it becomes severe by uh, two months, uh, 10 days and the crop loss is at 10 to 12 percent. So sometimes you have to be very careful while uh, uh, pruning is done to the particular plant. Symptoms. Uh, what are the symptoms uh, that you find uh, if a tree is being affected by a leaf spot? Brownish irregular spots. So you can see that brownish irregular spots that appear on the leaf surface and the spots enlarge and join together. So they, they can enlarge and join together, leaving a characteristic short hole uh, uh, on the leaves and the leaves become yellow and wither off uh, as disease becomes severe. So they just fall off uh, if the disease is going to become severe. So that's the leaf spot. And what, uh, how, what are the factors that's going to be responsible for spreading of the diseases? Uh, spreading of the fungal disease is by uh, conidia, that is primarily through rain droplets, because they are, go as we said, uh, these are airborne. And if you find them uh, uh, around in the air, what happens is the raindrops is going to capture this conidial spores or the fungal spores, and they're going to uh, uh, be thrown on the leaf surfaces. And definitely the plants are going to be definitely affected. And what is the proper uh, temperature for uh, this particular fungal growth to appear? 24 to 28 degrees. And this is the same temperature uh, which is optimal for uh, a healthy mulberry plant to grow. Uh, or when you are going to sow a seed, uh, that is going to be a, a optimum temperature. But again, this is again a temperature which is optimum for uh, the fungal spread. And a, a definitely a high humidity of 75 to 80 uh, percent. These are very congenial for development of this leaf spot. So how you're going to control this uh, uh, leaf spot? Follow wider spacing of plantation. So when you're planting a tree, you're going to uh, space them uh, at a wider range. That is 90 centimeter into 90 centimeter. That is the space that you're going to give from one plant to another plant so that there is no uh, accumulation, there is no water clogging, and you have a proper drainage system. Or when you're talking about, uh, that was about um, uh, the pit method, uh, which you're talking about in 90 centimeter, 90 centimeter. And uh, in a paired row planting, uh, you're going to have a proper 90 plus or 150 into 60 centimeters is the row um, uh, plantations. You're going to place them in a row. Um, and um, uh, this row plantation is uh, perfectly uh, good enough when you're having an irrigation facility, but when you are having um, uh, rainfall, proper rainfall, then you're going to uh, have a pit uh, uh, system where you can have a wider range of uh, arrangement for uh, the water to move away. Spraying of 0.2% uh, bavestin, that is uh, carbendazim, 50% solution on the leaves would definitely solve the problem. 
uh, of leaf spot. So these are the control measures. That is, first thing is follow the wider spacing uh, of plantation because you're going to give uh, proper room for the development of the plant uh, to grow and uh, proper aeration because they, they are sun lovers, uh, the, they are sunlight lovers. So you're definitely going to give them a proper uh, spacing. So each plant can have proper sunlight and uh, they don't like much shade because the leaves are not going to grow well if you're going to pl plant them in a shaded place. And of course, what, what is that you're going to spray? You're going to spray bavistin uh, on the leaves to control this particular uh, leaf spot. Coming to the next one, powdery mildew diseases. So if you can see the name suggests the powdery mildew, you must have seen uh, such a disease in our gardens also where uh, mostly the hibiscus plants are affected by this uh, powdery mildew. Uh, these are the same thing that is going to affect uh, even the mulberry plants. Uh, this is also a fungal disease and the pathogen, uh, the pathogen that is going to um, uh, affect this uh, pathogen that is going to cause the disease is uh, phylactenia, Corellia is the pathogen name, uh, which is a fungal uh, pathogen. Occurrence, the disease is airborne, again, because you're talking about airborne, and prevalent during rainy and winter season, same as that of the leaf spot. And the crop loss is at 5 to 10%, lesser than the leaf spot, uh, uh, the loss is uh, predicted over here. What are symptoms? How do you say that this plant is affected by uh, powdery uh, mildew? is uh, you find a white powdery patches if you can see on the leaves you are seeing that white powdery patches appear on the lower surface of the leaves the corresponding upper surface shows a yellowish uh, lesions uh, sometimes you will find some yellow lesions uh, around the, the leaves and uh, um, when the disease is severe the whitish powdery patches turn to brownish black so this uh, white color one changes slowly to brownish black the leaves uh, become yellow, coarse, and lose their nutritive value. So when they're going to lose their nutritive value, what is that, that you're going to feed the larval forms? So uh, this is a symptom where the powdery white patches slowly turns into dark color one. And after they have turned dark color, the leaves are going to grow yellow because uh, uh, there is no proper uh, photosynthesis occurring, then how is the uh, leaf going to survive? So definitely they are going to turn yellow and they lose their nutritive value. So what are the factors responsible for spreading the disease? Spread of the fungal spores through wind current, uh, leaf spot was through rain uh, water. Uh, here, uh, this is uh, through wind current. So if there is any um, uh, higher wind current occurring, then the conidial spores or the fungal spores are, uh, 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 they are they are spreading around the place and definitely they are going to affect the plant and uh, congen uh, congenial temperature varies again 24 to 28 and humidity at 75 to 80 percent the control measures again wider plantation is always because overcrowding means definitely they are going to be affected with any pathogen so you're going to take care of uh, the plants are not uh, crowded and you're going to give proper space for them to breathe and uh, what is that you are going to spray over here? 0.2 percent keratin or dinocap. That is 30 percent EC emulsion uh, concentration is what uh, you term as an uh, EC. That is how you are going to mix them. You'll be talking about this emulsion uh, uh, concentration, all those in toxicology when you are going to talk about it in detail over there. But here you have to just understand that 0.2 percent keratin or bavistin on the lower surface of the leaves will definitely help uh, control this particular powder mildew. Coming to the next one, leaf rust disease. This is also a fungal disease. If you, as the name suggests over here, if you can see the leaf over here, uh, they look like as though the leaf has been affected by some uh, rust kind of uh, color is found over there. So that, uh, the name in, as the name indicates, this is called a leaf rust disease. Occurrence, the disease is airborne. And the pathogen over here is serotelium pisi as a pathogen that is going to cause this particular leaf rust. Of course, it's an airborne prevalent during rainy and winter season. Mostly we see uh, all the diseases are due to the rainy and the winter season because of the cold conditions. Mature leaves are more prone to disease um, because uh, they are aging. So they are definitely more prone to this particular disease. Crop loss at 10 to 15%. 
Initially, small circular brown eruptions are uh, occurring on the leaves, and um, later the leaves become yellow and wither off. That is, they fall off. They turn yellow and they wither off. What are the factors that are responsible for spreading this particular disease? Dispersal of fungal spores by water and by wind, both. So they are going to be spread by both, by water and by currents. Temperature, 22 to 26 degrees and humidity about 70 percent. So this uh, this can also explain to us why we have some type of allergy uh, when there are many spores in the air uh, because you are inhaling those spores and uh, uh, that is going to irritate the respiratory system is when you are going to have this uh, um, um, hyper sensitivity uh, or uh, um, you have those um, you are allergic to this type of spores. Some people, some who are not uh, uh, um, immune, uh, uh, if they don't have proper immunity is when they have this particular problem over there. So fungal spores, which are definitely airborne, uh, is the one that is going to affect us uh, when you have those al allergic uh, reactions. Control measures, follow wider space uh, of plantation or uh, paired row planting system and avoid uh, delayed leaf harvest. So the more you're going to delay them, uh, the easy for uh, the particular fungal spores to affect uh, the uh, leaf. Uh, that is the reason why they say uh, the older leaves are affected more than the younger one. So if you're going to delay in harvesting the leaves, then um, this is the uh, fungal spores that's going to affect that particular leaves. So how you're going to control again by spraying 0.2% uh, coverage or uh, chlorothalonil uh, at 75% WP on the leaves uh, is the one that you're going to spray. Uh, all this will be uh, clearly written on the uh, pesticides or insecticides where you can read them thoroughly and uh, you can spray them. So when, when they mention that this much percent has to be uh, sprayed, you, you're going to follow only that much because over usage of any pesticides or insecticide, we are again going to spoil the environment. Uh, we have to keep that in mind. And uh, we have to use this insecticides and pesticides very judiciously because uh, uh, if we are going to be careless, then we are definitely going to spoil our environment, thereby spoiling the water and thereby uh, spoiling the uh, future generations' uh, good health. And of course, we are going to consume all those particular insecticides. Um, okay, leaf blight disease. So what do you mean by a leaf blight disease? As the uh, name suggests over here, if you can see the diagram over there, you have some blight diseases over there uh, going on. The leaf blight in mul uh, mulberry are caused by both fungi and bacteria. Till now we were talking about the fungal diseases. Now this leaf blight is going to be affected by both fungus and bacteria. And what is the pathogen that is going to affect uh, this particular disease is Alternaria alternata is the first one. And uh, Fusarium pallidorosium is the another uh, pathogen that is going to affect this particular uh, leaf blight. And uh, this is an airborne and is prevalent during summer and rainy season. Uh, most of them uh, were uh, summer and winter. But here you can see over here that this is prevalent during summer and rainy season. And uh, the crop loss is at uh, 10 to 12 percent. The disease starts as a browning or blackening of the leaves uh, from the tips of the margin. So sometimes you can see at the tips of the margin, they have, uh, there are some uh, blackening uh, occurring. And when severe, the entire leaf surface become brown and they fall. So this is a leaf blight where the leaves are thoroughly affected by this particular pathogen. That is, it can be either both fungi or bacteria. What are the factors that is going to uh, uh, spread these diseases? Of course, definitely water and wind current because the spores have to be carried through water as they don't have um, any locomotory organs. They have to depend on the environment for carrying this particular spores. So that is the reason why they are called as spores, round shape, conidia, uh, carried by water and wind currents. Temperature 25 to 30 degrees and humidity at 40 to 60 percent are favorable for the outbreak of the disease. So you are going to be very careful during the uh, summer and uh, uh, during the rainy season uh, where um, the temperature can be fluctuating here and there. Control measures to be adopted follow wider spacing. So for everything, uh, uh, control measures. 
uh, they say uh, prevention is better than cure. So you are going to place them as wide as possible. However, they have mentioned in the row and the pit system. And uh, when you're going to talk about the chemicals, you're going to use 0.2% dicane M45. Uh, another name for this is Manco Zeb, 75% WP on the leaves, wetted particles that is. Uh, this have to be uh, uh, sprayed on the leaves so that you can control this particular uh, type of uh, disease. Now coming to, uh, we were talking about the fungal disease. Now we are going to talk about the bacterial leaf blight. So you, because as I said, the leaf blight is affected by both fungi and bacteria. Uh, first, we talked about the fungal leaf blight by Alternaria alternata and Fusarium pallidorosium, uh, which are the fungal forms uh, affecting the leaves. Here, uh, you're going to talk about uh, the bacterial leaf blight. Uh, 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 earlier, we talked about fungal. Now, you're going to talk about bacterial leaf blight. Pseudomonas syringae or xanthomonas compestris are both uh, pathogen uh, that is uh, going to affect the leaf blight. So, these are both bacterial forms, pseudomonas and xanthomonas. Uh, as the name suggests, they are bacterial uh, pathogen which are going to affect the leaves. And you can see the leaf blights uh, occurring on the leaves over there. Um, symptoms, numerous blackish brown irregular water soaked patches uh, appear on the leaves resulting in the rotting of the leaves water soaked if definitely if there is a lot of water on any surface uh, then they are going to definitely rot uh, so uh, you find those blackish brown irregular water soaked patches what are the factors that is going to affect this particular bacterial leaf blight high temperature high humidity are favorable for the disease to develop that is high temperature probably during summer seasons uh, this is what is going to uh, develop and irrigation and cultivation practices in the soil. So you're going to take care of the irrigation and you're going to take care of the cultivation. Uh, that is, you're going to uh, plant them wider and you're going to take care of the uh, manuring of the soil, uh, taking care of a proper fertilizing of the soil, which will definitely take care of uh, disease-free plants. So how are you going to control them? Of course, again, wider spacing. So for every uh, diseases that you're talking, we are definitely seeing that the wider spacing of plantation or paired row plantation is a must to follow so that you have uh, a disease free plants. Spraying of a streptomycin that is at 0.2% or dithane at 0.2% on the leaves will definitely help in uh, controlling this particular disease. So that's bacterial leaf blight. Now coming to uh, a little bit of uh, viral diseases, still now we were talking about the fungal diseases, one bacterial disease, and now we are going to talk about the viral disease over here. We are all talking about, uh, still we are into foliar diseases. We are, as I said, we were talking about the foliar, uh, we will also be talking about the root and systemic diseases. Here we are going to talk about foliar, under foliar we had talked about fungal, now we are going to talk about viral diseases affecting the foliar of the plants. Mosaic disease. So, as the name suggests, you have those mosaic uh, colors over there. The occurrence of the mulberry mosaic disease, uh, commonly been observed in India, Thailand, and China. So, you find uh, this type in India, Thailand, and China, and uh, mostly observed in temperate condition where the temperature is uh, not very hot or not very cold, temperate condition. Causal agent, a virus transmitted by grafting or some unknown agent, including insect virus. The virus has to be transmitted uh, through something. So transmission can be by grafting because in grafting, you're taking one plant and grafting onto another plant over there. So definitely when you're not sure of that plant is um, uh, free of virus, if you're going to get a virus affected plant, then definitely the product that you're going to get is a virus affected one. So uh, this can be affected, uh, transmitted uh, by uh, the uh, grafting or sometimes by unknown agents, including an insect vector. Occurrence is reported to occur throughout the year in the mulberry growing areas. Symptoms of this disease, how, how do you uh, say that this particular uh, plant has been affected by the mosaic disease? It's initiated by a vein clearing. That is, you will find the veins on the leaves very clearly. The vein clearing, that is, the veins are slowly being degraded or lost and later turning into a dark and light green mosaic pattern. 
So first you find the slowly the veins are being uh, degraded and then later slowly you will find a dark and light green mosaic pattern occurring on the leaves. And as the disease is advancing, leaf becomes deformed, they fold up, they curl up. Uh, you don't find any proper formation of a leaf, distorted and twined up. And due to this infection, the internodes on the top portion of the shoots decreases and uh, auxiliary buds on the upper and the middle portion of the shoot takes longer period to sprout because not they are not getting proper nutrition over there. So definitely uh, they take a lot of time to uh, sprout and form a, a small double branches with small deformed leaves. That is, there is no enough time there is no enough uh, nutrition and definitely the deformed leaves are formed once this particular mosaic disease is affecting and the overall growth of the infected plant is definitely stunted. Now, when, uh, when the disease is severe, disease leaves rolls upwards and shrink, surface roughens, leaf blade and the vein turns brown, branches become thin and small and uh, uh, slowly, uh, the shoots in general can easily be broken off and um, slowly they die. So because uh, when the leaves are gone, the what what is the part that is going to do the photosynthesis and where is the food being uh, prepared and what of the food uh, uh, is being prepared is taken away by the uh, parasites over here uh, that is called as a mosaic disease. If you can see in the picture over here, you can see uh, very clearly the mosaic formation, the light and the green patches over there. So that, that is what the meaning of a mosaic disease. You can also see over here also, there's a dark patch and a light patch uh, alternating. Uh, that's called mosaic. And uh, you can see the, loves curl, uh, the leaves curling up, deformity occurring. There is no proper shape and slowly they become yellow and um, is when they uh, die away. And that's uh, about the mosaic diseases. Now we'll be talking about the dwarf disease. Dwarf, as the name indicates, uh, dwarf is a short, uh, um, stunted growth of the mulberry plant, uh, again caused by viral diseases. Very common disease in China, Korea, and Japan. Uh, the dwarf is also known to be the first mycoplasma type of disease uh, of plants. And uh, the occurrence of the disease, uh, the first time reported from Japan. So that explains why it is very common in China, Korea, and Japan. The disease can be caused by complete harvesting and excessive leaf plucking. So if you're going to excessively pluck the leaf, then there is nothing left for preparation of the food. So definitely there is a stunted uh, growth of the plant. Excessive application of nitrogen fertilizers infestation of mulberry field by pests such as grasshopper uh, very recently we came across this uh, gra grasshopper infection in the north indian side where they were just flying in um, uh, batches and batches and the mulberry fields uh, damaged by wind and uh, floods uh, what is the ca uh, ca causal agent over here mycoplasma type microorganisms. The, the plasma, mycoplasma type of microorganisms are the one that is going to affect this dwarf diseases. And these are affected, uh, how, how, how is this affected? Uh, by excessive leaf plucking and excessive application of nitrogen fertilizers. Now, if you can see obvious, yes, there is a loss of leaf, there is no proper growth, and they are also sh uh, stunted. They don't have proper uh, stem and the uh, diameter and a branch diameter of beer. And what is the visible symptom of the dwarf uh, diseases? Uh, you can see the curling up of the leaf of here. So they are just curling up on top like that. And uh, during initial stage of disease development, the leaves of affected plants show reduction in size. And there are serrations and lobing on the whole uh, length of the leaf margins. So they, they, they have those uh, serrations over there, the cuts or serrations that you find in the leaf margins. And um, whole length of the leaf margin becomes shorter, resulting in downward bending. So definitely they are falling down, bending or rolling of the leaves with severe wrinkling on their surface. Uh, the infected plants become extremely stunted. So what do you mean by stunted? It is uh, extensively become very short, short in growth, dwarf side. So that was a dwarf uh, disease. Now we'll talk about root. We talked about foliar. We talked about air, airborne. 
uh, and, and here we are going to talk about uh, root rot is the one that we are going to talk about that is uh, all those affecting the roots is what we are going to talk about in uh, this particular uh, root rot diseases root rot means the roots are getting rotten so that's as simple as that white root rot as a name suggests over here so you can see the white color the mycelia mat that is uh, affecting the roots of the plant over here caused by the fungal diseases rosalina ne necatrix uh, is the one uh, that is causing this particular diseases which is a soil borne pathogen so here you have to uh, understand that this is now not airborne but soil bone because the uh, root we are going to talk about the root and definitely the pathogen has to be present in the root uh, in the soil so this is a soil bone pathogen causing a disease commonly known as white root rot uh, it forms the mycelial webs and uh, strands close to roots and barks is invaded often with a fan like mycelial growth so a fan like mycelium growth is found over here uh, the fungus uh, roots uh, uh, they rot the root system and produces phytotoxins which is again a toxics that are transported in the sap leading to a decline in the vigor of the entire plant so that is the fungus is going to produce something called a phytotoxin phyto plant toxins is a toxic uh, toxicity for the plants so they are going to produce something called phytotoxins that are transported in the sap that is they are going to be transported in the sap of the plant leading to decline in the vigor vigor is the growth so slowly the growth is affected uh, and the entire plant is going to get rotten so that is called a white root rot what is the symptoms uh, in fruit trees the base of the trunk at the soil level can show signs of dark wet rot especially if kept moist by weeds or wet weather you can see always there's some watery um, uh, wet conditions that you find on the trunk and the mycelial mats ranging in color from whitish to grayish might be present under the bark at the base of the trunk so you 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 got to be very careful in checking out how they look like and as a degree uh, disease progresses the infected tissue becomes rotten of course trees develop a generally unthrifty appearance with the leaf yellowing halted root growth wilt small leaves early leaf fall small and shriveled fruits shriveled very small because usually you find the berries a bit longer one but here the fruits are going to become very shriveled halted root growth if the root growth is halted then definitely the plant is going to die wilt that is wilting of or dying very slow dying of the plant is what you're going to see and of course the uh, leaves are going to be very small and they're going to curl up and um, the whole thing is going to get yellowish and they're going to die so that was about uh, uh, the root rot over there uh, and what are the uh, symptoms is also what we uh, had seen so this is how the white root rot is going to look like under uh, when when it is being affected by this fungal diseases now coming to the violet root rot violet because as the uh, name suggests over here you can see that uh, the there is a uh, the color formation over there violet color formation of the violet root rot and of course you can see that even the plant is being affected completely uh, by this particular uh, uh, pathogen uh, that is the mycelial mats uh, or the fungal diseases uh, that you find uh, caused by helicobacterium mompa uh, that is the uh, causal uh, agent Uh, which is going to cause this particular root rot it uh, develops in the field during the growing season so they are going to be developed during the growing season itself that is that explains why sometimes uh, when the plant is still uh, under growing age uh, sometimes they are not surviving they die prematurely It's because of this particular wide root rot the affected plant die towards the end of the growing season and a certain reduction in the yield so definitely when they are going to die when, when there is no proper development definitely there is not uh, there's no uh, yield proper yield of the leaf so definitely there's a reduction the disease occur in the area where the water logging condition is more throughout the year because wherever there is water logging you are giving some medium for this particular pathogens to grow which will definitely affect the plant or 
it can affect any living organisms and um, the disease is called a violet root because uh, of the color of the mycelial mats that is present on this particular roots of here uh, the color of the mycelial mat is violet so definitely the name is, is violet root rot earlier we saw white root rot because the uh, mycelial was my, uh, white in color and uh, they uh, form a cushion uh, and cover the affected part of the plant especially at the soil line so at, especially at the soil lines uh, where the root and the branch uh, the stem is touching is where you find this particular violet root rot the disease causes mortality of the established mulberry plant symptoms so what is the symptoms uh, that you're going to see uh, when this particular uh, disease is affecting the foliage of the affected plant becomes chlorotic so what do you mean by a chlorotic that is uh, all the chlorosis uh, the uh, chloroplasts are being degraded the color is lost they become very yellow or green, uh, very light in color chlorotic uh, or chlorosis or death of the chloroplasts is occurring over there and the leaves at the base of the plant abscise prematurely at the base of the plant they abscise that is uh, death is occurring over there prematurely and they fall down the fibrous roots are packed together by a purplish brown to violet mycelial mat so you can see the my uh, purplish uh, mycelial mat that is a fibrous roots are packed the whole fiber fibrous roots are covered by this particular mycelial mat the fleshy roots also rot uh, and are covered by bundles of packed mycelium. So you can see the growth over here. This is the mycelial growth, uh, almost they resemble like that of a cotton um, uh, like structures uh, growing on any, uh, on any part of the plant. But here we are talking about the roots, then definitely you're going to see them. They have been packed um, uh, bundles of mycelia that creep on the root surfaces giving a web-like appearances, that is a spider web-like appearances of here. That is what you can see very clearly. The most conspicuous characteristics of an infected soil, especially near the root surface, is the presence of mycelial cushion. So this is the mycelial cushion and bundles on the soil surface under the plant. Initially white, they become pink to brown and then to purple brown or violet with the age. So initially they are first white, so you, you should not get confused with a white rot and a, a violet rot. So initially the color is going to be white, then they are going to slowly turn into pink and then into brown. Then they are going to get that purple brown or a violet color with age. That is, as the plant is aging, they are going to get that particular color. So then uh, because of that particular color of that mycelium, you are going to call them as violet root rot. What is the disease cycle? The disease cycle over here, the fungus lives in the soil and spreads from plant to plant through the mycelium that creeps on the soil surface. So they're going to very easily spread from plant to plant. Uh, in, the, in the foliar uh, uh, diseases, we saw that most of the diseases uh, are airborne because they are spores. They had to be carried uh, by uh, some uh, agent over here. So what is the agent for the... Uh, foliar diseases is definitely the air, air and water droplets by the rainfall. These were the one that we're going to transport. But here, because these are soil bone, they are going to spread from plant to plant through the mycelium that creeps on the soil surface. So they have to creep on the soil surface and then they're going to affect that particular plant. It can survive in the soil for the la uh, for at least four years. So even if you're going to apply a lot of fertilizers, uh, the insecticide and pesticide, if they're going to escape those uh, pesticides or insecticides, they're going to survive in the soil for the, at least four years, mainly as uh, sclerotia, but also as mycelial strand. And sclerotia are formed at the end of the growing season. And these are the shapes of how each stages uh, they look like. So the sclerotia are formed at the end of the growing season when there are no nutrients, uh, nutrients available. And as soon as enough moisture at present, uh, the moisture are present, uh, when, when the favorable condition comes back, the sclerotia starts to develop and invade the host. So what's happening? Uh, because they are going to survive in the soil in a dormant stage for four years, mainly what is in the, going to be on a dormant stage in the, in the soil is going to be mainly sclerotia. 
but as a mycelial, uh, but also as mycelial strand, but mostly it is uh, sclerotia that is formed and they are formed at the end of the growing season. So as soon as enough uh, the moisture is present, the sclerotia starts developing and invade the host. So they develop, they invade the host, the fungi disperses through the rain and uh, irrigation water through the movement of infested soil, especially if the field are on a slope. So this fungi disperses through the rain because they are moving from one plant to another by creeping. Here, as soon as a moisture is present, the sclerotia starts to develop and invade the host. The fungi disperses through the uh, rain and irrigation water through the movement of infestation, especially in the fields, which are very slow, so they're going to be dispersed. And when the soil is irrigated for a new crop, the fungus grows outside the plant on the soil surface during the early part of the growing season. Because as I said, it's going to stay there for four years. Uh, definitely, uh, they are uh, going to uh, form uh, the infectious uh, cushions from which infected hyphae penetrate the host and invade the middle lamellae of the tissue in the root system. So what it says over here? When the soil is irrigated for a new crop, the fungus grows outside the plant because they need water first, they need the proper development over there. So they're going to grow outside the plant uh, on the soil surface during the early part of growing se uh, season, forming infectious cushions. We saw the infectious uh, cushion like structures over here, the, the hyphal growth is what we are going to talk about. And um, the infectious uh, cushion uh, like structures and uh, uh, what exactly is happening over here is um, they are going to form that um, uh, cushion-like structures and uh, by the end of the season, these are going to um, affect the particular uh, part, uh, uh, forming infectious uh, uh, hyphae or the strands-like structure that grows, which penetrate the host and invade the middle lamellae of the tissue in the root system. So the middle lamella is the one that is going to affect and definitely the whole uh, root is um, get, going to get rotted. Now, uh, we'll talk about a little bit about this twig blight of mulberry. So um, uh, the, here we will be talking about the blight of the twig blight of the mulberry. We completed the root now. We're going to talk a little bit of the twig blight of mulberry. Fungal diseases, again, caused by Fusarium pallidorosium. Uh, introduction of here is the disease is a minor disease first reported from Mysore. Uh, this is a sign, uh, the, uh, uh, the scientist who had discovered this, Govindaya et al., who published this particular paper in 1990 about this particular minor disease called twig blight of uh, mulberry. The author is Govindaya for this paper. The twig blight was reported as a serious disease of mulberry in Kashmir. So they found out uh, uh, not only in Mysore, but also in Kashmir Valley, this uh, twig blight was found. How do they look like? Appearance uh, is of a dark brown spot on the infected twigs. Uh, there's a dark uh, brown spot here. You have to note it is not on the leaf, but we are going to talk about the twigs. Shrinkage of the cortex, bark bursting, yellowing and premature leaf fall are the main characteristic uh, symptoms of the diseases. So here, uh, as the infection is affecting the twigs, shrinkage of the cortex is occurring. And as the uh, shrinkage is occurring, the bark is bursting. That is, they are going to break open. Sometimes yellowing and premature leaf fall are the main characteristic symptoms of this particular disease. Marginal browning of the leaves, not only the twigs, um, the leaves are uh, the outer margins of the leaf is also getting brown and forming of irregular black lesions at the initial stage of infection. And in the later stage, the lesion coiles and spread longitudinally. They come together and they form a longitudinal uh, spread resulting in the splitting and drying of the branches. So slowly, the branches tend to dry. Uh, dry and uh, ultimately they are going to be uh, dead. The branches become feeble because uh, splitting and drying definitely it is going to become very soft, um, uh, very feeble and brittle. 
and they are so fragile that it can be uh, broken uh, or broken very easily bursting of bark yellowing and premature uh, leaf fall are observed in the later stage so slowly uh, and steadily the whole plant is going to get uh, affected and they are going to die uh, at the end because bursting of the bark yellowing and premature leaf fall are observed in the later stages uh, so they also have uh, uh, some uh, type of uh, uh, preventive measures uh, uh, wherein you can come across different uh, chemicals that can be used to prevent this particular twig blight so how is this twig blight going to look like so you can see over here uh, the the blight part that is a, a, a closer look at how they are uh, looking over here so you can see that twig blight uh, is what we are talking. It is not going to be a, a normal color. The whole twig is not going to look very normal over here because um, this part is the one that is being affected over here. Something like the leaf blight, where we saw some brown spots uh, on the leaves. In the same way, the twigs. So these are the twigs, uh, all those twigs over there. So these twigs are the one that can be affected. Uh, and, and as the name suggests, it's called as a twig blight. So there are more to discuss about uh, in this. We, we have to talk about in the nematode uh, um, uh, parasites also here. So because there's some time constraint, um, we'll uh, talk about this in the next class. Um, and if there's any questions, uh, you can just uh, uh, call up and uh, ask us whatever the question is there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ma'am, how many chapters we have to learn for the exam next? <laughs> how many chapters in a sense because all the chapters are important because uh, uh, they the are no ma'am actually I'm married uh. huh. so for the passing marks uh, how much I have to learn how many blocks if I learn uh, uh, a personal for me, uh, like the examinations may I, may I know your name what's Sobia, your name ma Sonia uh, these so are some personal Sobia, questions so Sobia Sobia, these are some personal questions because our uh, yes. uh, uh, video call has been recorded. Uh, you can uh, contact me on uh, my uh, uh, WhatsApp account so that we can discuss about all this personal question on that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Can you give me a number, ma'am? It's there. It's there. The on number. The it's there on the WhatsApp group. You can ask any of your students because uh, this has been recorded. So I don't want to um, uh, reveal my phone number. Okay. Yeah. So you can just ask your friends. Your you name, have. I'm Dr. Padmini over here, right? Okay. You can contact me on okay. the university site or you can, because you're having your classes also right now, I suppose. Uh, the first year classes are going on. You can just come down on Monday and we can discuss uh, all those in the college. Right, okay. Yes, uh, okay, Thank yeah. you. Okay, fine then. Thank you for uh, attending the class. See you all in the Thank next you. class. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Come here. Ami. Ami, may I take a class of Santi? Tell it to me, I have to say, I have to say, I have I want to take a class of Santi. Ami, 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 Hmm? M Vaisa ni bitte. J K L ha M Vaisa. M Vaisa. Ah ah N. Yuka how is the bachcha? Hmm. N na. And ka N na. A N T and ka N. N Vaisa. Oh. बोलो बोलो पहले नाम बताएं M N O O लिखता लिया T बोलो बोलो पहले को आता है Q Q वैसा नहीं आता small Q कैसा आता सो Mm. R R
आर पैसा नहीं आता बेटे स्मॉल आर गिरजा दादी बोली पिछे वक्र को स्मॉल आर लिख मेरे चीजें वहां रखो और ये पसारे उठाओ 
तुम्हारे पास आ रहा नहीं उठे ना वो चार्जिंग को लगा लो बैठो बैटरी थर्टी परसेंट है अम्मी आप फेदा पाठ को ताती के तो प्रोडक्ट आती है आप फेदा अम्मी कैसे तो पे मैम का आता मी अम्मी कैसे तो अम्मी मैम की पेलिंग क्या अम्मी मैम की पेलिंग क्या एम ए एम 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 नहीं
আমি কিছু তোপনা হিনে কিছু তোপনা তার কথা মানে না দাদি খালি দেখ তো তোর একবার চার্জিং কো লাগা যা আমি তার কথা প্লিজ কা বল কো দেন ও ভাই কো হা সব কিডিও কিডিও চিপ মে নাই আতা ম্যাম কা মারে স্কুল কা লিংক রেজ কো নিছে কিডিও কিডিও চিপ মে সব নাই আতা ज्यादा ओवर एक्टिंग आ करना को जा हमें फोन में नंबर का नहीं आता उसमें कोई को आता नहीं आता आता मुझे तो पता नहीं आता कुछ लेकर जाकर मैं आपको नहीं आता फोन में नंबर कोई नंबर को नंबर नंबर बोलो तुझे उसे दे दी मिस्टर फोन आपको पढ़ना पड़े इसमें मैं मैम की स्पेलिंग को रोबनी मैं मैम की स्पेलिंग को लो मैं मैं छुट्टी में सब नहीं आता हूं मैं मैम की स्पेलिंग को लो मालूम मालूम मुझे स्पेलिंग से सब नहीं आता वो लिंक पहले स्क्रीन पे नीचे आता और वो स्क्रीन में नहीं आता मैम 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 नहीं है तू 